happy Wednesday. So tonight we are continuing on the Splendid Sampler to Quilt Along. We finished a block last night and I'm hoping to get another one done uh, during the rest of the week. So thank you for joining me here tonight. My name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. Uh, that's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. Uh, it's a time that we can relax and craft together for about an hour here. And I work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the entire project along the way. We've been doing a lot of quilting and sewing projects lately, uh, but we are doing uh, embroidery next week and uh, we try and fit in other little small projects here and there as well. If you have a project you want us to work on, let me know and uh, we'll see what we can do. It's fun to, fun to stop and start projects and uh, see where they go. So uh, thanks again for joining me, you guys. Uh, we are continuing on the Splendid Sampler to Quilt Along. So last night we finished the Adventure Bounds block I think it turned out so lovely. Uh, we're doing, again, those pale colors. It's just a very pale quilt. We've been calling it the blonde quilt. So we are making the blonde quilt. I thought I'd show you a little bit more of that tonight because I know there were some questions about it last night. Uh, tonight, we are also going to start the American spool block. So I think this looks relatively quick and easy. I am hoping to finish it this week yet. We have uh, today, <laughs> tomorrow, and Friday. I don't know, there's a little, um, uh, there's a little uh, applique and embroidery involved, so I don't know if we'll get all of that done, but I think we can get a good chunk of this going. Uh, I'm hoping to get that flag look to it. I do have that star fabric. I don't know what I have for stripes, so we'll have to kind of dig a little bit and I don't know, get creative on that maybe. Uh, so, all right, I'm gonna flip you around and uh, we will get started here tonight. Thank you guys for joining me. All right, I got my fabric here. We need to pick fabric for this yet, but I thought I'd show you kind of where we're at with the quilt. So I have the other bin here. Uh, so this is the block we did last night. We finished it up. This was all uh, foundation paper piecing. And we have a few other blocks ready to go. So uh, I think we have five of them ready now. Look at this guy, remember him? <laughs> and, uh, and this one here. So those are our kind of current loose blocks. And uh, so what we do after this, we're doing this quilt as you go. So I'm going to show you that process a little bit. Oh, I am still putting in a pop of color every once in a while, surely. I have to see what block we're on. I think every five blocks or so I was going to add some color. So maybe not this one, but maybe we'll do the next one. So, all right, after I get four blocks done, or after I get a kind of a bunch of blocks done, then I start arranging them into four. And I'm usually pretty random with how I do that. So you can see the four blocks and I've put a little piece of sashing in between with a little square. So this hasn't been quilted or anything. So I, I get it to this point. Let's see, I think I have a couple. Ooh, I got lots. So I have three of them at that point. <laughs> Look at, remember him? He's all sunny and shiny too. Look at the back of this one. Gosh, that's actually kind of fun. Just like that. This was that crazy, uh, like almost pixelated horse one. <laughs> that back is so cool though. I do like that. All right. So I have about three of them at this stage. Here's, here's the last one that's at that stage. Then after that, I layer it with um, with the batting, and I actually and, and a back. I I have um I have some of these pieces cut out already as well, and I have some batting pieces, and that's when I quilt it. So uh, we are quilting these uh, just patches of four. Uh, together. So this one I hand quilted. This is my attempt at uh, learning how to hand quilt. It's actually, I think it's prettier from the back. You can kind of see some of these, these patterns. So this is all hand quilted. Uh, but typically we have been uh, 
machine quilting it. So I'm also kind of using this project as a way for me to practice machine quilting. And that's that's all of this decorative um, stuff. Uh, so it looks like I only have one of these. Uh, so after I get to this stage, that's when I start doing the quilt as you go assembly process. So we've been uh, we've been quilting just these small chunks of four, and then I have been taking those smaller chunks, so these smaller sets of four, and I've been adding um, a binding strip basically so this this strip is actually it looks like it's part of the quilt but this is actually what is holding this piece to this piece so on this side we have um that white strip you can see there's no quilting in it because we put it on after we quilt and then on the back there is a, a little like joining piece as well so this kind of covers up all of our raw edges and that's kind of the process. We will definitely be continuing this process and going through it. So you'll see me do do this process again. But look, so this allows us to just quilt smaller, smaller pieces and then combine them all later. So this is just a, a grouping of two. But I do have the first row done. So this is our first row of the quilt and this is all grouped already. So we basically have, you know, two rows together. Uh, so I'm doing 10, it's going to be 10 by 10. So here are the groupings of four, but you know, at this point it looks like it's all the same quilt, right? Look at all that quilting. That was fun. <laughs> I'm practicing. This is all, all my attempts at practicing. Oh, and this was uh, the tree on the hill. Oh, I really like this one. And this is the little waves of water. This one I used a really um, poofy batting. I I'm using different battings. I'm just kind of using up scraps of like wacky batting. So this is this one that was actually really thick versus, you know, this one next to it was really thin. So it'll be interesting how this acts throughout the quilt. Um, all right. So those are the ones that are... Uh, that's the whole row. So eventually this one that's just two, we'll get to that and then we can do the same process to sew the two large rows together. So anyway, the benefit of this quilt as you go is that when I'm done with the blocks, I'm going to be done with the whole quilt, <laughs> basically, except for putting the bindings together. So uh, that's what's just going to be so neat. I'm going to kind of basically bypass that whole process of quilting a giant, giant quilt when we're done, because I'm doing it in in smaller chunks. So that's that's the process, you know, all the way back to us finishing finishing each each square here. <laughs> so we do have some, it looks like three pieces that we could actually quilt. And man, if we got these three pieces onto this section of two, we would have another, another two rows done. That would be pretty awesome. Um, but right now I'm just trying to plow through some of these blocks, but maybe, maybe next week we do some of this quilting and assembly stuff again. I, I think that might be fun. Take a little bit of a break from making the blocks and get some of um, the rest of it, rest of it done again. So I have it all in this little blue bin. It kind of almost fits, not quite. I'll just leave it open. All right. So tonight... We are going to work on this American spool block. I'm kind of, here's my blocks that I uh, don't have done. All the ones that aren't highlighted are, are unfinished or haven't been started. So I'm, I'm just kind of going down, down the list now. We did the Adventure Abounds uh, yesterday, finished that. So I'm like, eh, let's do the next one on the list, American spool. And it looks pretty easy. It looks like we just cut, you know, a couple squares, rectangle, get some little border triangle things on there, and we're basically done. So let's find some fabric. Uh, we need the background fabric. So immediately I'm going to use white for that. 
because one of the rules in the quilt that I'm doing is that whenever there is a background where it looks like a background, I am going to use white. And you could kind of see from my quilt, it is a pretty white quilt, a light colored quilt. I haven't done a quilt like that before, so that's been my challenge. Uh, one of the challenges of my block, or of, of the quilt that I set for myself. So all of this, I'm going to make white. That's an easy, easy one right there. Okay, the next one... You know, I have that star fabric that would, you know, work pretty dang swell for that, the star area. See, ah, it's so pretty. All right. I kind of like laying it out, laying out the colors of the block as I go. So if this mimics the background, you know, then, then we have the little star in the corner there. So it'll be something like that. All right, so in theory, I want some stripes here. That's going to be the challenge, I think. I don't, I don't really have any stripes. I mean, the most I have is this, and I, I, I suspect I don't even have enough of this fabric. Ooh, I wonder. Let's let's see. Okay, blue. Okay, uh, I'm looking at the instructions here. Cream, blue, navy, gold. Oh, red stripe piece. So, oh yeah, three inches by eight inches. Okay, so I need a, I need a four and a half inch by two and a half inch. I might have enough with this. Let's let's get a ruler out. Oh, let me look. If this is four and a half inches, <laughs> okay, I might actually be able to get it out of this piece. Um, a four inch by two and a half chunk and then a two inch by two and a half inch, something like that. We may get it. So I'm going to put this on the sidelines because that'd be pretty cute. It's not quite a, not quite a flag, but I think you're going to definitely imply, you're going to definitely going to imply a flag here. Oh, Sylvia, that's a great idea. I could paper piece the, the stripes together. I could just like cut a bunch of strips. Um, I'm going to see if I can do it with what I have here. I'm actually kind of thinking this is pretty cute. I mean, it's, it's subtle, but I think you might get it just barely. I think someone might get it like, oh, that almost looks like a flag. Um, I think that might work. So let's, let's keep looking though. I think these two definitely look pretty on, on the white together. Okay, so let's see, just in case, maybe I do have something kind of stripey hiding in here. I mean, this this is not enough. That's barely stripes. I mean, we could maybe dig into my colors, but that's a lot of color all at once. If anything, I would think maybe maybe the needle we do a color. Yeah, nothing, <laughs> nothing, nothing, nothing here is implying stripes even here. Wow. I am not a stripe picker apparently. All right. Let's let's go with this. I think this is these colors are actually kind of pretty together. Uh so let's just go with it. This is going to be my implied stripes and that's going to be my stars. All right. And then we need uh the top and bottom pieces of the spool. Let's see, what can we do for that? So these are both very tan colors. I do have some yellowish colors. Maybe we go with one of the yellow or even, you know, that's maybe a little loud. I'm just thinking maybe we go something a little contrasty. I mean, barely contrasty, but maybe, maybe one of these yellows. Let's just pull these out for a moment. Actually, this pink is kind of pretty. This is one of my newer uh fabrics um i snagged a few fabrics from from my mom last time i saw her. here's a pretty yellow this is kind of like a small little gingham um which would go with with this other one uh, let's see what let's see what we got going on here all right let's get our little mock up here again all right that's our flag so we could Oh, that's pretty. I don't have much of that fabric left, but I do like that. Maybe we um, go with this one instead, because I do have a lot of it. So this is a... 
I do kind of like the yellow. So I, I like uh, this tan, these kind of tan colors, and then we have this this yellow. It just sets the um, tan apart a little bit more. All right, so it'd be kind of something like so. It's not bad. All right, let's see what the pink looks like. Kind of mauve -y pink. Not against that either. It's kind of cute. Maybe that just brings the whole, maybe makes the whole thing a little bit more subtle. Then we have this light colored one too. I think that's just a little hot. Um, I kind of like this pink. I think I'm going to go with this pink here. Is that what you guys are thinking with the darker. I think these pop a little bit more and this just feels like a backgroundy uh, type color. I do kind of like it. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's true. So it has kind of some mottled kind of brown in there and that does look pretty similar to actually both these colors. Uh, so, okay, I'm down with that. I like that. Uh, we do need a a needle on the top of this, but I think we'll, we'll let it be. I think let's let that, um, we'll pick that needle color later. I mean, maybe we just, we could do a pop of color for the needle. Like that would be actually kind of pretty, but let's, let's choose that later. Um, let's stick with what we got here for now and we'll make that decision next. So, all right, I think we are good to go. Let's get this stuff pressed. Uh, let's see what we need. Get it cut. I think this is going to go relatively quick. So let's, let's cut what we know right here. You know, this, this is the stars. Um, okay. We, why don't we go in order? <laughs> that's probably a smart way of doing it. So the cream print piece, that's this background. So that's going to be my white. Um, uh, okay, so I need four squares that are one and a, a half inch, and I need two rectangles that are one and a half inch by four and a half. So ideally, I'd cut like one long strip that's one and a half inches. Uh, it would need to be, okay, this would be four, five, six inches. I need it about ten and a half inches. And I think with this white, I do have that. I could just cut like a little strip here. That would be perfect. Oh, that's a good idea too. I could embroider a silver needle. Yeah, we could we could really skip the applique, really, and then just do some um, embroidery for that needle because we're already having to do embroidery for the thread. So we could do like a little silver needle and then uh, some embroidery thread. That's an option. I am deciding to not think about that. <laughs> until we until we get that far uh that's definitely the last part of the process here so i'm gonna just that's too much for my brain tonight <laughs> all right let's uh let's get that one and a half inch strip out of here i'm guessing this is at least 10 inches um let me get the ruler out here get my cutting glove Oh yeah, it's 13 inches. So I'm going to cut a nice edge here. And then I think I'm going to rotate this around and cut the one and a half inch. And then we'll, we'll cross cut all those sizes that we need. Actually, I wonder if this is actually 10 and a half inches on this side, then we'd be wasting a little less. Ooh, we might just get it with this. All right, I might be daring and use this side. Uh, <laughs> so let's let's press. I, I might just have like literally just enough with, with this, but that'd be kind of fun. Let's do this edge. Get a little press beforehand. It is so nice having the uh, iron right here. All right, I am. I mean, this is a pretty straight edge, but it does have all these little fuzzles hanging off. So I am going to just trim those off. All right. Come on, fuzzles. All right, and I think I'm going to just rotate this around. 
and get my one and a half inches off of there. So I'm using the line on the ruler. Okay, I think we're good. Oh, you know what? This is definitely not enough. <laughs> I'm going to cut another one off of here because I actually need two rectangles that are the four and a half inch. So I I was thinking I only need one. I'm like, this does not seem right. I, I am going to need more. So I should have cut it off of that side. <sighs> oh, well, we'll have an extra little one and a half inch strip laying around. Well, didn't do that right. Okay. Let's fold this up. I definitely should not need any more white. Yes, you guys. So uh, next week, or not next week, two weeks from now, we'll be working on the Orophil block of the month. But it has been released already. So uh, today it was released. So I, I put a link to it here. Uh, I think Verona is the town that it is after this time. I think that's I think that's right. I'm going to cut both of these at once. So uh, I did put the link so you can check it out, the story behind it and um Oh, I forgot who the designer is, but holy cow, can she do some uh free motion quilting? I mean, dang. Uh she she is doing some amazing quilting. Um so it's pretty exciting. I want to look at her work more for sure. I think I'm gonna get my big ruler out. There, now I can just cut uh, the four and a half inches with this ruler. One, two, three, four. But yeah, her, bra her, um, her block was pretty, I thought. So that'll be, it'll be a fun one to do. I think it'll not take very long either. So we might get it done pretty quickly. All right, I need four of these. I definitely have tons left over. That was silly, but oh well. Okay, so that's two. If we get all our cutting done tonight uh, and maybe a little sewing, I, I think that would be very good progress. All right, these we don't need. Oh, you saw the interview. So I have to read through it yet, but holy cow, um, her work looks so good. <laughs> I love um, that photo where she had hardly anything quilted and then it's super duper densely quilted around that. That makes such a nice poofy look. I just really like it. All right, we have our four squares uh, of white and our two rectangles. So we're done with the white. Um, okay, next up, blue stripe rect rectangles. Okay, so the blue stripe in our case, I believe is the spool part. And we were using kind of that goofy mauve. What do we need for this? We need two... Uh, one and a half inch by six and a half inch bits. So what do we got going on here? I wonder if, I wonder if this is 12 inches. It'd be nice to just cut one, one strip there. Ooh, not quite, I don't think. Um, oh yeah, and I need it, they need it, it needs to be 13 inches anyway. <laughs> All right, what's, what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. 10, 11, 12, All right, you know what? I think I am just going to cut a strip here. I could cross cut smaller strips, but it is kind of fun to use a big long strip when I can. So let's press this to get started. I'm just kind of plopping it all on top of my workspace here. This is, I thought this was a batik, but it's really not. So it has a, a batik would have um, the same color all the way through, but this does have a back, a, you know, a, a visible back that's different. Uh, that looks like the back of a normal wrong side of the fabric. So uh, it, this is not a batik. 
it is uh, printed, even though it looks a little batiky. All right, let's do a trim of this long piece. Hopefully I can fit it on my mat and I can. That's great. So let's just trim that edge nice again and then we will do um, the one and a half. I'm guessing that's what it is. Yep, one and a half inches the other way. And then we'll cross cut it. Looking good. Thanks everyone for joining me again tonight. It's the uh, best part of the day when I can hang out with all of you guys. All right, rotate this around. And uh, that one and a quarter, or nope, one and a half. Eep. Make sure to get that right. One and a half. Ooh, this ruler is a little wiggly. I'm gonna get my book a little bit too. All right. So that's cut. I I don't need any more of this fabric. It's just so funny. It's just uses hardly anything. These quilt blocks. I mean, I got this huge chunk of fabric left. It says this if I never did anything. Um, I'm going to fold this in half and we'll trim um, just this edge so it's nice. Then we'll flip it around and cut our uh, six and a half inches. So let's get this edge just pretty. All right, scraps. And I think I'm gonna just rotate the whole thing. Okay, so let's use, get it straight on one of the lines. And I think I'm gonna just use the edge of my ruler like this to get six and a half. Three, three and a half, six and a half. Great. All right, we'll just trim this little bit off here. Okay, so that's a scrap. And uh, here are the two strips. That's the top and bottom of the spool. Let's just plop it with my white cut fabric. What is next? All right. Uh, cream, um, blue, even though not really. The next is the navy print square, and that's, um, that's my stars. D, navy print square. Okay, a two and a half by two and a half inch square for that. Let's see what we got going on here. Now this is, again, another relatively new piece of fabric that I acquired from my mom's stash. Uh, she uh, is done with this project well and done and she said i could look through her creams and yellows and um grab what i needed from there so this is from that oh yeah the background it has this kind of mottled look how uh how that pink mauvey color has too all right i think i'm gonna kind of cut this on a square. You know what? I'm just going to grab one of my little square rulers. I think that's just going to be easy. I got the selvage here. So for this, I need a two and a half inch square. They sure are, Shirley. Shirley says moms are the best. I talked to my mom and dad today. Um, you know, we're all still in quarantine, so that's a huge bummer. We're itching to go visit them again, but ugh, don't know, don't know how or when that's gonna work. Don't like it. 
All right, so that's the one edge. I'm just gonna rotate it. And now I'm gonna get my nice ruler here right on the two and a half inch mark. Okay, two and a half, two and a half. All we need is that tiny little bit. All right, done. <laughs> so again, out of that whole fabric, that's all we all we needed. It's funny how weird our fabric gets on a project like this where we're just cutting odd shapes that we need here and there. Okay, we have just one more fabric. Oh, besides the needle, I suppose. Ooh, I think we're gonna get sewing yet tonight for sure. Oh, this is great. This is gonna be such a, such a fast project. Seems this is the longest y'all haven't visited. You know, we have um, been visiting a whole lot like this past year and this year, so it is a huge bummer. It feels like a long time that we haven't um, haven't been visiting um, um, since we just haven't gone in a while. Oh, this is that piece that I barely have enough of. So, okay, so I need... All right, I need a two and a half by four inch rectangle. That's like this. And then I just need another two and a half by two and a half inch square. So I'm gonna have to like, tr I'm gonna have like a, this much left of this fabric. Let's uh, see this. Oh, so Didi's saying we have no new cases here in South Australia. Now they're just, they're starting to test anyone with any slight symptoms of a cold. Dang, I mean like here, people are going to the hospital saying, uh, I have all the symptoms I need to test and whatever and they're still they're still not testing so I think our numbers are super duper skewed um there's got to be a lot more people that have it because there's been just several you know friends of friends story not just like uh, like news story um but actual people that we know who they just won't get they won't let them get tested I, and I just think it's not available. Um, I have a little hair here. But yeah, so uh, um, that's great that you can get tested now for sure. But yeah, our, our friend, our friend's brother has it and it, he had to get his doctor wife to just yell at everyone uh, before, like he went to the hospital twice to get tested and they wouldn't test him until his wife, who's a doctor, was able to, you know, procure one somehow. So that's how you get tested. And then he was positive. So <laughs> uh, anyway, all right, two and a half inches. I think I'm going to cut just both right away. I'll have an I'll have a little square laying around, but I think that might be the way to do it just to make this easy. So I'm going to just cut two uh strips here. Two two and a half inch strips. And one will be our four and a half inch one and one will just be another two and a half. Although I could, you know what? I think I am gonna just, just for the sake of that, this is my only piece left. I think I am gonna just um, get a nice square out of here. I think this is actually, this edge is looking okay. So I'm gonna just see if I can get two and a half inches out of it this way. Then I have a little bit, it's all connected here yet then. All right, two and a half. There we are. All right, now that piece is done. It can live another day in another block. All right, I think that's it. I think that's it, it, it. I can already see how it's going together here. <laughs> All right, I think that's gonna be so cute. All right, let's get going. Um, we need to start, uh, let's, I mean, let's get going with some sewing. So I'm going to, I think we need our, I'm literally just looking at the photos. I should probably read the instructions. 
Um, press all seam allowances. Oh, that's a normal thing. Draw diagonal. Okay. I think we're good. I think I can do this by just looking at the photos. So I'm going to just put it kind of where they belong. So the first part is I need to sew these squares into each corner. And I need to sew exactly from diagonal to diagonal. Um, I need to make two of these. So when they flip up, it'll be like this. And you know, this one will go down at the bottom. And then I'll do another one exactly the same and it'll rotate to the top. So let's, uh, let's do that. So I need one here, one there, one here, one there. So you can draw a line uh, from corner to corner with like a pencil and sew right along that line. Uh, I'm gonna just fold it. So what I'm doing is just kind of pressing at the corner. I'm not, I'm not like dragging my finger or anything. I'm just pressing it down, you know, and there we go. That's plenty good line for, for me to sew along. All right, so that's one. I'm kind of just placing it right away too. First is getting a ruler out and a pencil and all that. I'm just, just gonna give it. If I was doing like 800 of these, then yeah, maybe I would just get the pencil out and, and do all of them at once. But just for this, I think this'll do. Did I cut the length of the check fabric? Yeah, this should be right, I think. For oh, oh, you're right. You know what? You're right. I did not cut that. It just looks it looks the same. You're absolutely right. Um, <laughs> it looked like it was the right length, but it, it's not. We didn't cross cut this yet. I think we had a pretty straight edge on this side. So <laughs> good. Glad glad you caught that. Let's. Um, what is it even supposed to be? Four and a half. The red stripe piece. Okay, four and a half inches. This has got to be at least four and a half inches. So this ruler is exactly four and a half inches. So we'll line it up with the edge. Phew, okay, that would have confused me a whole lot later. <laughs> Oh, so this is in um, normal. This is from the uh, penguin or the penguin of fish. This is from the Splendid Sampler uh, two book. So it's on page seventy four of um, of the book. All right, here is my second one. Same direction. Because we'll, we'll just rotate one around when we're done. Oh gosh, that I didn't fold very well. All right, I think that'll do. So let's sew along each of these lines and then we're good to go. To the machine. Gosh, we haven't been on him yet today. I'm, I, I missed you from yesterday, little guy. Did a lot of sewing yesterday on, on it. All right. Okay, so one thing that's helpful when you're sewing triangles is to not sew from this side where you just have like this one point. A lot of times when you just have this one point, your machine will want to eat it. But if we go this way, where, uh, you know, we have this strip going up like that. There's more for the feed dogs to grab at. So I'm going to sew in this direction when I, when I can. Just trying to make sure I'm on the other fabric there. Make sure right sides are together. I mean, I'm just using this white. Oh, you know what? Let's get a leader in here as well. I can start another leader. I actually only have like three more pieces of fabric, so I'm gonna have to, uh, going to have to cut more, more scrap fabric for, for this project. Ooh, wow, we're not moving anywhere. We had the shorter stitch length last night. There, that's better. Okay, now let's get 
get this guy on here. So I'm going to go right on that line. If anything, I'm just going to go to the outside of the line. Then uh, uh, when I fold it, I'll, I'll have enough space for the fold. All right, so I'm going to try and do the always have something on the machine uh, way of doing it again. So let's get the second one going. All right, I'm gonna take the first one off. Oh, I could, I could just continue my granny square quilt. Uh, I have all those strips hanging out here. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. All right, so this goes the opposite direction. My second, um, second piece. All right, and again, I'm gonna try and sew in a way that we have this long edge here. Ooh, that got sped up a little bit there. Okay, and last one. All right, and uh, ooh, let's let's sneak ahead in the process just so we can keep sewing. So I'm gonna, um, I believe these two pieces go on each other. So let's put right sides together there. All right, and now we can take these two pieces off and attend to them. All right, let's press. Okay, so now for these, um, ooh, stuff everywhere. For these, uh, you know, now in theory we cut this edge off and then we fold this up and then we have our, our shapes here, right? I think it's actually easier this is like a nice trick. My mom showed me this trick. I don't cut off these pieces right away. These outer, this, these excess, this excess triangle press first, because then you can line up what you're pressing with, with the edge here. And it should end up being nice and square. So just like that. And then we'll go back and we'll trim. We'll trim that off. So let's see this one. See, I got to pull this one a little bit more to get it to line up. There we go. Oop. <laughs> Shoulder dia. All right. And then I just take a scissors. You can, um, you can open this up again and just like rotary cut a quarter inch to the edge from the edge but I just I just open it up and I just snip off about a quarter inch seam allowance it's totally fine to use as scissors but there we go so now that's our final final piece there if you accidentally sew all this in that's fine it'll just be a little thicker there that's no problem okay there we go so those are little scraps and there we go. There's one piece. So now, um, and it's nice and nice and square there. So we just have to do it to the other one here. And then we're good to go. We're going to crank this one out. Gosh, maybe we'll be, maybe we'll be uh, doing some embroidery tomorrow already. That'd be cool. It's a two black week. That's awesome. All right, snip those little ends off. Make sure to move your piece back because we need, we need that piece. All 
Okay. There we go. Our two pieces. Whoop. All right. So one of these, they're, they're actually the same. We did them the same, but when you rotate one, then they're the opposite direction. So this one will go here. And then we have this one up here. And it looks like um, we have to sew this onto our other piece. So we do need to take this off the machine. So those two pieces that we just sewed, it will go onto here. And then we'll go droop, droop, uh, get these sides on. And then the top and bottom. And man, we're done. <laughs> so quick. So this one will, this one, uh, will get uh, pretty near done, I think. All right, let's, we need this piece, so we're gonna have to take it off the machine, but I have my other little project that I got going on here. So that's fine. I'll have to show you where this quilt is too. So instead of just putting a little piece of thread in here to do this, like how some people do, I have a whole nother project going on here. We're making half square triangles. All right, this gets, uh, it looks like pressed open. So let's go ahead and do that. I don't know if it was, um, if it was just me, I probably wouldn't press it open just cause I hate pressing things open. I'm trying to learn to love to press things open, but it just seems like it's another step. So if I, if I, and I always burn myself. So there's that. So I'm pressing it. First, I'm pressing it to one side first. And so you can see now my seam allowance is going the one direction. We actually want it open. So that's what I mean by open. We want it like that. And that just kind of disperses the bulk to both sides instead of having all the bulk on, on one side. So let's get in there. But some people swear by this and you know it's true you don't have to keep track of you know what direction you pressed in and i think uh, quilters like it or i mean uh like free motion quilters like it because everything's a little bit more flat but i just love nesting the seams together when i can but you know what that's that's awfully pretty right there that wasn't too bad that didn't kill me so all right <laughs> let's uh we gotta sew this piece to here oh see it's it's flag-esque i think um someone could look at it and kind of get what we we're going for there all right let's put those right sides together and we'll sew along that edge and then we'll have to press that so that'll have to come off the machine again then we can do the sides a lot of uh, coming off of the machine. So I'm going to just get, I only have two pieces of this fabric left. And uh, let's grab two pieces here. I think we will need them. Then I got to cut more. I'm going to have to have a cutting party uh, here at some point. Prep all of the projects again. Okay. Uh, this to this. Okay, let's match that up a little bit better. All right, and let's get another leader started. Okay, there we go. Let's press that seam open as well. Um, let's see, what size am I using for these? I think they're three inch squares, which I know isn't like a totally normal size, but I wasn't thinking about that. Uh, they're, they're three inch squares is what I'm using here. Let me grab what I'm making out of them so I can show you guys. 
So this is actually what I'm doing with all of those squares. So each one of these, you know, I'm, I'm sewing on both sides of the diagonal. So if I cut down there, I'm going to have a half square triangle here and a half square triangle on this side. So this is will get me two half square triangles. So that's what we have going on here. I just sewed, trimmed and sewed together a whole pile of them. So eventually, <laughs> just by having my bucket of these fabrics cut next to me, uh, while I work on other projects, I'm just sewing. This is gonna be some crazy random recycled quilt here. So I, I call this kind of my magic project because uh, you know, I'm, I'm, it's all scrap, so I'm sewing stuff from nothing, and I'm sewing it while I work on other projects, just those leaders, but man, do they add up. I have, I think I have like 12 of these uh, at this point already. But anyway, so that's that project. My kind of while I sew other things project. All right, let's press this seam open. Oh, it's looking cute, cute, cute. So now this I feel like should just be pressed down, but we'll we'll open it still. I suppose when we sew the other seams on, it'll be kind of nice. So there's a lot of bulk on on this side, so I don't know. I'm just going by what the instructions say. That's looking awfully sweet though, isn't it? All right, let's uh, see what's next. I think we just um, sew this guy on, then sew this guy on. Uh, we'll, we'll have to take it off the machine each time, um, but then we just have this top and bottom. Oh, that's sweet, I like it. This is a good easy block to do. I'm I'm happy with it for sure. All right, let's sew. And we get a get a few more leaders done. That's always nice. This would be great if you just had like a stack of um those charm like a charm pack, which is that two and a half inch pack of fabric. This would be great for that. Ooh, I'm stuck on something. There we go. All right, I'm gonna just sew the other side of this one. All right. Uh, before I press, I'm gonna just get that other side on right away. Gosh, we're definitely going to be on to the embroidery and applique tomorrow. Wasn't thinking we'd get that far on this block. We might even have a little free day in here. Who knows? That'd be kind of fun. That guy's done. Let's press these seams. So now these seams are pressed just to one side, it looks like. I'm, I'm looking at the instructions again. It looks like uh, we're gonna press them, oh, to the inside. That just seems so weird. Maybe it's just because we're pressing to the dark side of the fabric. So typically, if there's a lot of um, seams, like there's a lot of stuff sewn right here, and you can already see it wants to be out, um, a lot of times you'll just go with that. So we would press this outward. But then there's also, there's also, like like this, but there's also the 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 way of thinking that you always press towards the dark because with a light color like this you can really see that seam allowance through the light color so there's a habit of pressing towards the dark in our case it's all this stuff in the middle and it looks like that's what they're going with at least for the instructions at this part is 
pressing towards the inside, even though the fabric wants to be going the other direction, but we'll go with it. I'm just gonna give it an extra little push of heat here. Because like I said, it wants to be going that other direction. All right, there we go. Looks pretty with those little white edges. All right, last up is uh, the top and bottom. So in theory, <laughs> if we have a perfect quarter inch seam allowance, these should match up and uh, um, these points should line up exactly with the points of the spool. I, I mean, we could actually put pins there to make sure that it lines up perfect, but I think I'm just not gonna worry about it. Let's just hope it gets close. I think that'll be fine with me. All right, that guy goes there. Okay. Could maybe put a clip or two in here, but oop, I think, uh, I think we'll just start. All right. And All right, I think I know why we are pressing towards the inside. It's so that right here, um, Right here, I can feel the bulk going in that direction and this direction, so I can really kind of feel the point where they should meet. And so if I sew right over that point, like I just did there, we should be, um, we should have a pretty good lined up point. We'll see in a moment here. <laughs> see how we did. Uh-oh, that seems like Something's eating something here. Holy cow. All right, let's redo that. Wow. Okay, so my machine caught on something. Whoa, what is going on? We got the crazy bird nest here. Well, that can make... Oh, look, it looks like um the thread got stuck underneath here somehow. Wow. Okay, we got super stuck there. Huh. It just like jumped um, to the other side of the foot. All right, we're fine. <laughs> Crazy. I don't think I need to sew. Oh yeah, we are missing a couple stitches. So let's let's sew the last little bit here. Like it's like I got caught on the front and I don't know, that was pretty bizarre. I think it was at least. I don't know, seems weird. Huh, bizarre. Don't know. We just changed the bobbin and all that. Machine was hungry. Yeah, exactly. The machine needed a snack. We're getting too confident. That's what was happening. <laughs> all right, let's see how um, how these matched up quick. Oh, yeah. See, so that that's where I could kind of feel uh, them come together there. That's looking pretty good at that point. Let's see how we did here without thinking about it. So yeah, that one's a little bit off <laughs> and I, I kind of get it. So that's why we pressed, pressed this one to the inside because this being pressed to the outside, it was almost like nesting seams. I could, I could kind of feel where they met up. So on my next, uh, the top, we'll try and do that. I think if I press this um, down enough, I think we'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> it's totally fine anyway. Um, so, all right, let's, let's uh, flip this down this fuzzle off of there. Okay. So I'm gonna feel for where those edges kind of meet now. And by feel, I mean like actually physically feel. You can see even the bump there. That's where I'm gonna aim for. So I'm gonna just start stitching and then I'm gonna aim for where those meet. 
Okay, so like right where the seam line meets, about right there is where I want my needle to end up. Okay, I think that's good. Now let's worry about the rest of our piece. Okay, and now as I approach this again, I'm feeling for where that, where the, those bumps meet. And I think I, yeah, my seam allowance is the wrong direction. Let's flip that around. All right, right about near there, so. All right, and that's it. And you guys, I think I'm just gonna take it off of the machine because I am out of liters. But that is the last little bit we need to sew. <laughs> Looking cute. Gosh, we finished that all tonight. I guess I am going a little bit over, but dang, I mean, that was so quick. So uh, tomorrow we will have to do the thread part, the thread and the needle. All right, now we press towards the um, we still press, well, yeah, that's kind of goofy. So we're pressing this way now too. Um, so I'm just pressing it on the back quick and then I'll give it another, um, good press from the front. And then we have practically a finished block here. Ooh, these quick, easy ones are nice every once in a while. And we even, um, we even got the flag in there. I think that's awfully sweet. That looks like a flag still. I think so, at least. I think we managed that, uh, the stripes pretty well for not having stripes. It's that star fabric. Um, the star fabric is what made this. If I didn't have that star fabric and, and I didn't have stripes, I probably would have gone with that, that alternate version that is just a square in the middle. So we can take a look at that. So here's the alternate version if you don't want the flag. But I did have that, uh, I had that pretty star fabric, so I think it's so pretty. I really like how it turned out and it's so simple. Um, all right, so all we have left is uh, this little applique needle and a little kind of running stitch thread going through there. So uh, tomorrow uh, we'll figure out what we're doing for that, how to transfer it. And uh, I think we can probably just trace through if I get a light table out, I think that's probably what I'll do. Um, yeah, and we have to decide if we're gonna embroider this or do some applique and how we're gonna attach that applique. So that'll be the job for tomorrow. I think we're gonna have a free day on Friday. So I'm gonna have to see what else we can work on around here and get done. Oh, look, this kind of pulled a little thread here when I was sewing, too. Yeah, oh well. I think it's cute, though. I definitely did a better job at lining up these points uh, than I did that first time, but I figured it out. <laughs> All right, you guys, I am going to flip you around, and we will call it an evening here. All right, hello. So let me uh, show you how that turned out. It's always kind of different seeing it from far away, uh, but there we are. Uh, I think those Rita stripes, I mean, right now it looks reversed just because my phone's reversed, but cute, easy, so easy. <laughs> Sometimes it's those easy ones that are the best ones. Uh, that, that was nice. So that was quick, um, again, way faster than I thought it was going to be. And yeah, we'll get that spool and that little thread on tomorrow. No problem. I don't think we'll have any uh, trouble getting that done tomorrow. And yeah, we'll have a, uh, we'll have a free day on Friday. So it's, yeah, it's like a, a finish it Friday, <laughs> uh, special. Uh, maybe we'll start a project. How about that? <laughs> I don't know about that, but, uh, the opposite of finish it Friday. <laughs> So awesome, you guys. I will work on getting this video in the last couple days up on YouTube at Penguin and Fish Movies so you can watch them there. Uh, and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow. Have a great rest of your evening. Good night.